Way to Grow is brought to you by Lacoste Garden Center, located at 2787 St. Mary's Road. All of these bugs have just been picked off of this garden. Welcome to Way to Grow. My name is Laura Ravy. This is Dwayne Friesen, our gardening expert. And these are a whole bunch of really gross potato bugs that Carol, who uh, owns the garden, who is standing over there watching, um, and uh, she's picked all these off. It took her yeah. hour. It took her six hours yeah. to pick these bugs this, off of these plants. Yeah, this is her pail of death here. <laughs> And uh, just to illustrate one way of dealing with potato beetles, and that's a common thing that we have to deal with in Manitoba, is the potato beetle. And if you're gonna have potatoes, you're gonna have potato beetle. Uh, and, but just to show that one of the more thorough ways of dealing with the issue is picking. And uh, we can just look at what some of that problem is on the plants beneath us here. Yes, we have stage one right here. We have uh, stage one. And uh, just so you can recognize the problem, if you can catch it at this stage, very easy. Um, very iridescent, orangey, yellowy eggs on the bottom of the leaves. That is the potato beetle eggs right there waiting to hatch. So if you would want to get rid of them, you could wipe that off with a finger or a tissue or take that off. Now those babies are gone. They're not going to be an issue anymore. Um, going through your plants, finding those egg clusters and removing them, either wiping them off or removing them is, uh, is one of the best ways, you know, it's going to be a little bit more proactive and there's no chemicals involved. Now with some of the, the issues, obviously we can see on this plant here, um, they really can do a lot of harm oh, to they, a plant. Yeah, they are much, and you can see there's various stages of, of the larvae on here. This plant here is in stage three. It's, it's going pretty good here. You can see the amount of damage. Now that's obviously going to be stressing the plant. It's removing the leaves, which are the sun's receptors for carrying on its growth. And so you want to get rid of them. And again, what Carol was doing was just simply picking them off, putting them into the pail getting them off of there. They're easy enough to see. You can find them. They're, they're right there to see. So you can take them off, get them into a pail. But traditionally, we've been relying on a lot of chemical controls to deal with these things. Um, a product uh, such as this, this product here, King PTV, it probably, it's a name I can remember as a kid um, seeing it on the shelf with, uh, with my parents. Um, it's got a carbaryl insecticide in it. It's a contact insecticide that uh, breaks down very fast. It can kill the insects. But the insects seem to be getting immune to it. It doesn't really seem to work that well. Um, but it's still something I can use. It also has uh, uh, some uh, fungicide in it as well to help with uh, the blight on the potato. On our last show, or a couple of shows ago, we talked about the diatomaceous earth. I'd actually say that would be a better route to go with powdering on your plants, pouring that over. But when you have this many, um, you're not going to get them with this even too. So Carol's method, picking. I would strongly urge that's the route you're going to go and take care of the potato beetles that way. And you can do that with a lot of the insects in your garden. If you're going to find aphids on your plants, um, pick them off or pick that leaf off that has them. The problem's gone. You know, in the time it would take you to go mix up a solution to spray on it, you've cleaned it up. It's gone. There's nothing to spray then. So I would urge people to be a little bit more uh, using their fingers. It's not, it's not really that creepy. Or get a pair of gloves. You can do it that way. Uh, <laughs> so does this plant, is this plant dead now? Will no, it come back? Oh, not at all. No, it's, uh, potatoes are very vigorous growers and you can see right down in here, um, it's pushing out new growth. So if there is no uh, beetles on it to get at it, it's just going to push out new growth and we can come back and do our next taping and, and you wouldn't recognize the plant. So do uh, you just pinch these off or you just leave them? Uh, those you just leave on there. You just want to get rid of all those. Okay, another pest there. in the garden is weeds and weeds. sometimes it's really hard to tell what's a weed and what's a plant. Oh. We're going to go over to the corn and have a look. Now this is probably the only weedy spot of the garden left. Carol's been so diligent at weeding, but she left this for us to talk about uh, why it's important to pull weeds in the first place. Yeah, and the weeds are going to be something that are, are you want to get rid of. Um, they're going to be a competition for what we want to grow. Um, so you want to get rid of them for th that reason, first of all. Uh, the next thing is, is that they're going to be very competitive. Um, they're going to be very prolific with their ability. A lot of the weeds are going to be annuals. They can reproduce seeds many times over the course of the season and overtake what we want to grow. So we want to get rid of them before they're going to get to the seed stage. But they can also be carriers of insect and disease. And so we take those out of there so that we're giving, uh, we're making the odds more in the favor of the garden being a success as opposed to the weeds. So we want to get those out of there. And you'll notice that if you would let your garden go with the weeds, your yields will go down. You're going to have a lot more disease issues. So you'll definitely notice if you're not keeping up with your weeding on the performance of the of your crop and your and your harvest at the end. Now as a novice gardener I find it very difficult to tell what's a weed and what's not a weed so yeah. are there any and tricks there'll to be, that? And there'll be some experience that you'll need with uh, identifying <laughs> that's remarking the rows um, that we did where Carol marked the rows with the little onion sets 
in between so we knew where the rows were in starting mm -hmm. and she was illustrated careful weeding in the first little bit and then you start getting narrow as the plants mature. Okay. Um, so you'll start recognizing the uniformity of the of your plants that you've seeded coming up but uh, here we've got many different ones here there's going to be some uh, pigweed coming in I saw some lambs quarters here's some more portulaca like we had before uh, coming up out of here there's some thistle and uh, here's one of the banes of uh, of uh, the garden is uh, Siberian elm. This is oh. actually a tree <laughs> oh. growing up in here. Uh, that can be an awful one to have. And uh, you know, just imagine this is going to be like a shrub by the end of the year. Yeah, so right. you want to get that out of the garden and leave the corn here. But you do want to be a little bit careful. They'll um, Let's look at that one. That looks like corn to me. That but looks like corn, but that will be uh, that will be some grasses coming up. So how do there. you know that? Um, just it's not where it should be you can see it's not quite as flat okay. on there it's a little bit more rounded and uh, on this one it's not clasping quite as much around here it's coming off the stalk so look so carefully remember look where carefully. you planted stuff replanted yeah okay but get rid of the weeds because that will again we talked about with potato beetles and, and debris before um, with insects you're just going to have less insects if you can get rid of the weeds as well and less disease issues if you can remove them too great thank you so much okay